Hello, my name is Heather Allen and I'm an assistant professor at the Chem Center and served as the lead author on a scoping review of child welfare decision-making research that is the focus of this presentation. But before we dive into that, I wanna do some level setting. Life is the sum of all of our choices. This can be read through an empowerment lens that we are the masters of our own destiny. That's well and good when we're making decisions about our own lives, but what if we're making decisions on behalf of others? Today, we're examining decision-making in child welfare, an arena where decisions are highly consequential. There is an abundance of research that demonstrates decisional variation resulting in inequities, including racial disparities, as well as generally poor outcomes associated with child welfare involvement, particularly in regards to foster care. Given that over one third of US children and over half of African-American children will receive a formal child welfare response before they reach adulthood, the implications for decisional variation are profound. Enter the decision-making ecology. The DME is a framework for understanding the complexity of decision-making in child welfare. The DME posits that there are four factor domains that feed into any child welfare decision, case, organizational, external, and decision-maker. Here's a sampling of some of the factors within each domain that can be explored to understand variation across child welfare decisions, from the decision to accept a referral through out-of-home placement and subsequent decisions to reunify or terminate parental rights. It's also worth highlighting that decision-making in child welfare is sequential and additive. By the time a child is being placed in out-of-home care, multiple assessments and decisions have already been made on their behalf that determine things like service provision, which in turn can influence the decision to remove a child. Our ability to accurately and effectively respond to family needs via the assessment and subsequent service provision aspects of child welfare is the conceptual foundation upon which the system is built. The notion that if we can effectively respond to risk and safety needs, we can keep kids safe. However, there are some assumptions to that foundational understanding that are worth interrogating. Namely, that organizational policy dictates how caseworkers will uniformly respond to the families they are working with according to the facts of their case. Indeed, there is a growing body of evidence that other non-case-related factors impact these decisions as well. This decisional variation is the subject of our inquiry. In embarking upon this scoping review, we sought to understand both the breadth and depth of DME factor and decisional outcome exploration in the literature so that we may better understand what contributes to decisional variation so that we may gain some insight as to how to mitigate it. So what did we learn? The DME is being used to understand child welfare decision-making all over the world. Of the 56 studies who made it into the final sample, the majority were conducted in North America with the rest coming from 15 different countries in Europe, Oceania, Asia, and Africa. The studies we reviewed examined various combinations of DME factor domains. While case factors were the most commonly explored domain represented in nearly 90% of studies, all but six explored more than one factor domain with a quarter of studies examining all four. Looking more closely at the constellation of factor domains explored, we see 10 iterations of domain combinations with a plurality of studies examining all of them. Here we begin to see the complexity inherent in understanding decision-making and we haven't even explored the factors themselves. Turning to those factors, we illuminate the complexity of variables explored across studies. Looking first at case factors, there were a total of 435 independent variables, of which 28 were unique explored across studies. As shown here, the majority of these factors were case or family level variables. For the sake of brevity, the remaining three DME factors are summarized here. Caseworker demographics comprise the majority of decision maker factors explored while organizational culture and community demographics made up the bulk of organizational and external factors respectively. While case factors make up the majority of factors explored by studies, it stands to reason that they also make up the majority of factors that are statistically significantly associated with decisional outcomes. However, decision maker, organizational, and to a lesser extent, external factors are also regularly showing up in the literature as being impactful. So long as decisional variation exists, independent of the facts of a case, we risk fueling disparities in service provision and outcomes that can result in inequities, many of which disproportionately and negatively impact marginalized communities in profound and multi-generational ways. As professionals who may be in a position to make highly consequential decisions on behalf of children and families, we owe it to them to make sure that we are doing so with more than just our good intentions. Cognizant not only of the potential impacts of our decisions, but also of the myriad factors that influence them, so many of which live outside of a family's control. If we can understand this variation, then we can be armed with the knowledge to make, mitigate its potentially harmful impacts. We can know better, so we can do better.
Thank you for your attention. Please don't hesitate to reach out for more information. A link to the final scoping review, which is in its final revision stages, will be posted to our website upon publication.